another type. Another type of radioactive decay that is related to beta decay is known as the electron capture. Now in the electron capture process, our unstable nucleus of the atom basically captures or takes an electron that is found somewhere around that nucleus of the atom within the electron density and brings that electron inside that nucleus. And once it is brought inside that nucleus, that electron basically combines with our proton to form a neutron and in the process, the proton and neutron essentially disappear and a neutrino particle is released into uh, the surrounding area. So basically, the equation that describes what takes place within the electron capture decay is given by this equation. Now, if the nucleus captures one of those electrons in the innermost shell of our electron density, then such an electron capture is typically given a name known as the K capture or the K electron capture. So the proton in the nucleus basically captures our electron and combines with it. These two disappear or they become our neutron. And the neutron basically is created along with the emission of our neutrino particle given by V. Now, the general form that describes the equation for the electron capture decay is given by this equation, where X is our unstable nucleus known as the parent atom, and X prime is the more stable daughter atom. Now, basically what happens is the nucleus in our X, in this atom, basically takes that electron inside, so it combines the proton electron and the number of protons and electrons decreases by one and that's why the Z the atomic number decreases by one along with the number of electrons found orbiting that nucleus. Now the number of nucleons A doesn't actually change because even though we decrease number of protons by one we increase the number of neutrons by one so <coughs> So there is no change in the number of nucleons. Now what actually happens when that electron is captured? Well when one of these electrons in the inner orbital is captured by the nucleus, it creates an unoccupied quantum state so it leaves an empty space in which another electron that is higher in energy can now basically transition into that lower in energy and more stable quantum state and that means when this transition takes place, when an electron goes from a higher quantum state to a lower quantum state, it releases a photon of energy. For example, if the frequency is just right, our photon can be an X-ray. Now, the question still remains, why in the world would it be beneficial for our nucleus of the atom to actually capture one of its electrons? Well, when the number of protons in the nucleus is too high, while the number of neutrons is too low, we know that that type of nucleus contains very high electric repulsive forces as a result of those protons, and that basically creates create an unstable system. Now that basically means that if our electron is captured by the nucleus and it combines with the proton by decreasing the number of protons in the nucleus and increasing the number of neutrons in the nucleus, that increases the strong nuclear forces and decreases our electric repulsive forces, thereby stabilizing that nucleus of our atom. And one particular particular example in which electron capture readily takes place is when the beryllium-7 isotope combines with an electron, takes one of those electrons in the inner shell and basically forms the lithium atom, releasing our neutrino.
Now recall in our discussion on the positron emission, the positron emission basically does a similar thing in the sense that it also tends to decrease the number of protons and increase the number of neutrons. Now recall that the positron emission also stabilizes the nucleus of the atom by decreasing the number of protons and increasing the number of neutrons. Now, the question is, if they both essentially do the same thing in terms of stabilizing our nuclei by decreasing the number of protons, so that basically means these two types of decay readily compete with one another. Now, where, now, <coughs> 